Hi, I'm Jerry Buell, Executive Vice President for the Americas at SGK, and I'd like to welcome you to the AMERS segment of our Around the World with SGK virtual event. Most of you probably know us in this region, largely because Clarence Schock founded the company in Chicago in 1953 as a packaging and production plate making entity. It's our legacy business and one that we remain committed to. However, a lot's changed in 48 years, and today we'll be bringing you evidence of that through some exciting sessions that dig deeper into creating brand experiences and the role packaging plays in that. We've expanded our offerings to include asset creation and services for e-commerce channels and other brand experience channels to help our clients deliver more meaningful consumer engagements, increase brand loyalty, and drive conversion to sales. Over the past few years, we've made significant investments in our global technology infrastructure and are working collaboratively with many of our clients to integrate with their systems, which will improve their speed to market and adaptability. And while we continue to expand our capabilities, we've remained true to our core packaging expertise and our ability to produce packaging assets on a global scale for many Fortune 500 companies, one of which you'll hear about in our next session on rethinking adaptive design. In all of today's sessions, you'll hear from our thought leaders and subject matter experts with insights about trends, as well as showcasing some exciting work we've recently completed for some of our clients. It took a village to bring so many together, some of whom you'll see and hear from today, and others who remain active contributors behind the scenes. I'd like to thank them all. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank our regional and global clients with whom we work closely to simplify their marketing, amplify their brands, and deliver extraordinary value. I hope you enjoy today's program and walk away feeling inspired about new opportunities for your brand. Thanks for joining us today, and I hope you virtually travel to the other regions to see many more exciting sessions. Pringles is a super fun brand. From the can shape to the shape of the crisp, it's just a completely different experience than your average bag of chips. So one of the key things we needed to do on Pringles is to design the team around the challenge. And as we started to meet with the SGK team, uh, my goal was to uh, really set up the team and the capabilities and the expertise that we have on this team in a way that was going to serve the brand and serve the, the job to be done. So it, was a, it was an amazing opportunity, you know, Pringles is just such a, an iconic global brand, so to change it and, and, and do it efficiently and do it globally um, kind of really gets the cogs going and puts fire in your belly. So we did go through a vetting process, uh, exploration process on who was best set up to lead this amount of the work and they came back with just a fantastic plan for Pringles. And it's a hub and spoke model where we have our center creative team for SGK sitting in London uh, and sitting in the United Kingdom. And that is the hub of the work, the design work on Pringles was out of that office in London and Manchester. They have two offices in the UK. But what we can do with this model and, and using our, our, our global footprint is to leverage the local market knowledge, the nuance, as well as the more technical aspects um, to deliver a really focused design solution that is right for those audiences. We identified a client service lead and a global creative lead that sat at the center of the, the wheel and that team was responsible for collaborating with our teams in all of the global regions and making sure that the decisions that were being made in those regions aligned to the design principles of Pringles. And so before any work even went in front of clients in those regions, our internal teams were looking at that and governing that so that we didn't put anything in the hands of our clients that we didn't ourselves endorse as consistent. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye everyone.
And what really kind of worked really well to glue all that together and achieve it was we had a consistent design director and that design director had links in with a global team with the different regions, you know, and helped drive that out from a European perspective, but also ensuring that other unique flavors um, could be consistently delivered. And there was no other overlap with other regions and other flavors that could get rolled out at a later stage. The great part of SGK right now is that SGK works as a global team. You know, there are people working for Europe, there are people working for US, there are people working for even、uh, China, for instance. So when I want to create the design, sometimes I don't have to create from the scratch. We are a connected global org. A lot of companies have. You know, dots on a map on where they, they sit globally, but we really are one team. I think the established camaraderie and teamwork that we had in place really made us、uh, a successful partner. We kind of knew that、um, to make it successful, communication and good communication amongst the,、uh, the different regions and different teams in the regions was at the heart of it. So we couldn't do anything without really sort of. You know, having, having some really、uh, collaborative meetings. We had a, we would have a, a global meeting once a week where we, where we would、uh, you know, share thoughts,、uh, talk about any challenges or issues that we had along the way. And it was very, it was very,、uh, it was like a self help group. You know, we, were, we were working together, overcoming、um, minor obstacles that might have been there. There were some people in some regions slightly ahead, so they would, they would feedback learnings. Diana, you look very bright eyed. <laughs> Not bad for five a.m. For five morning. <laughs> We have really talented creative teams. This was designated an adaptive design project, and I think when companies think of adaptive design, sometimes they think about things that are more tactical or closer down the line to production. And while that is true, and it's really important to bring that production expertise upstream. The fact that we have incredibly inspired, talented creative teams that thought strategically about the bridge between the strategic design and how that design was going to show up across all forms and variants was incredibly important to the success of this project. Start a project like this, there is a what is in principle a global design. How do you take something like that and bring other markets on board to deliver a, a, a truly global solution, one that everyone's invested in? So, the first point of that is obviously very close collaboration with the, the lead agencies that's developed that design,、um, and that is less a, a passing of the torch moment than a transitional period where we work with them collaboratively to help. Understand and define some of the rules because not all those things are always kind of fully worked through in the beginning. But that needs to happen almost in parallel to some of the more practical work that's happening, particularly in some markets which are running quicker than others,、uh, to actually deliver designs and get them onto shelf. And particularly in some markets,、um, the demands can be quite、um, rapid. So we're having to balance those two aspects. And there is a little bit of tension there, clearly. but、uh, That, that's something that we can only do by ensuring that everyone is investing on board with the process. The most complex、um, aspect of the, of the project was driving that consistency、uh, and making sure that we were always on point in terms of communicating、uh, amongst ourselves with the client to make sure that all the, all the, all the fixed design assets were in place and then how much flex could we allow in different regions. So that was one of the One of, the, one, of the, one of the challenges,、um, the biggest challenges that we had. So, when we got this design that we were starting from, it has this really cool stack of ingredients that kind of captures that pop moment of Pringles where the flavor kind of explodes from, from the crisp. There were really great examples across. Five or so flavors of what that was going to look like. But we had in front of us this portfolio of hundreds of flavors,、um, anywhere from simple line extensions to things that were highly complex, where we had to interpret that flavor stack、uh, for those other variants. One thing that SGK Creative did、uh, so well for us is to take this very simple、um, 
framework for how to tell the food story, uh, this uh, vertical stack of chips and flavor cues, and have fun with it. Really, there's a theme to putting those flavor cues together with the chip. So on ranch, that's a lasso with ranch dressing. Uh, on a barbecue, you get um, a kebab uh, with a grill uh, with the chip in between. If Pringles is gonna have something that depicts heat, what is the Pringles way of doing fire? If we're going to do something like, you know, a cutting board or a cowboy hat, how fancy should that be? How illustrative should that be? What sort of tone should that have? And so we did some work in stepping back and establishing what the anatomy of that stack was. It gave us a kind of checklist of criteria that we could use in our creative reviews to say, is this a stack that only Pringles could do? Or is some part of this stack a little too fancy or a little too kitschy? We talk, we talk about this idea of um, Pringles expressing itself in a way that only Pringles can do. And that food stack story is really unique but that only works if we find interesting and different ways to express each flavor, because otherwise it just becomes a bit of a shopping list. So finding that humor, finding that local nuance, something that was relevant to our consumers in the food story. So for example, in, in Europe, we have a salt and vinegar flavor. Rather than having just a spoonful of salt, it has a nice little chip fork. And that's probably not something that people in the US would be too familiar with, but it will bring a little smile to, to uh, European and particularly British um, fans of fish and chips as, as a very common utensil. So there's lots of little details that we just had the opportunity to bring to the story which we, we found massively rewarding. You know there's such really nice design details such as the, the Pringles Post newspaper in there. So, so that, that for me was and it's such a big it's such a big flavour, global flavour. This new design had four key elements on a pack. Now, of course, the logo we were not able to touch. And we have this hero chips, which, is, which was the second from the top, has to fix it, means that we cannot touch the chip. So we only have three elements. There's a four stack. Top and the bottom two is the only three elements that we can play around. And also, of course, the background color. And if you think of like that, um, for example, if we are making um, a cheeseburger, a food stack, for instance. We only have three elements to play. So we can't have buns, top and a bottom because then where's the cheese gonna be if we're gonna have a patty inside? So we have to come back with some of the option to say, hey, maybe the bottom will be the bun with beef and then there is the cheese flying and then there is another bun on the top. And those are the only flexibility that we could have uh, compared to before, we could create any type of uh, the food story that we wanted. So it was a very restricted, but yet um, that the hierarchy kind of makes the whole pack looks exciting. So at the end, it worked. It was challenging, but it worked. So we uh, we did have some um, some good kind of uh, fun and games with with some of the and some challenges, I guess, with some of the the flavours that we have in Europe, um, you know, and, and one of the big ones was cheese is a really good example. You know, amongst Europeans, there's a there's a massive range and very deep seated associations that, that vary by country. You know, so what it meant was there's a lot of careful consideration of how we would de define those and, 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 a, and a single expression, what would work across different markets to deliver a great cheese delivery for Pringles. Yeah, you know, and some of the nuances in here was kind of getting a bit crazy. It was the shape, the color of the cheese, how many holes, you know, was it sliced, was it crumbled? Was it even, was it the cheese board that it actually sat upon? You know, there was an awful lot of, we, we had a lot of fun with a lot of games, do delivering that within a food stack um, and reviewing numerous iterations and illustrations of it. And I'm a cheese lover and it was just amazing seeing some of the work that came through because the bad thing is I was constantly hungry and I was craving for even more cheese. Key to the success of the project was the visual content of the of the packaging design. Uh, there were the stack, the food stack, the food story, and to to get the best uh, representation and the most consistent representation of the food and the flavour variants, we wanted to make sure that we got the best illustrators in the world to uh, come and help us and come on the journey with us. So we built an illustrators bench 
uh, using the best that we could find from around the world. And we used these illustrators to, to help us throughout the project to build excellent, uh, fantastic uh, looking uh, illustrations of the, of the food uh, and the food story. What I meant by food story is this chips in the middle, uh, I mean, from the top, we can't touch. This is already fixed by the global and we're not even supposed to change the angle. So this is fixed. We could only uh, play around with the top and then two bottom of the, uh, the food stack. And it's not really easy because, you know, we have to keep the same width with all the stack and elements might not be always the same size. So if we do have a small element, then we have to make sure that it's a balance through the full stack. And I don't know if you can see, but there is like a flame um, from the, um, the capsicum so that it's, you know, it's cooked, it's grilled, it's hot. Um, we try to explain that particular flavor by doing a little things, but to make sure that the consumer understand what is this flavor looks like by looking at the, the food stack. We finally released all our SKUs, um, core and sub-brands as well as multi-packs in the new Bowtie logo. So that's super exciting. Um, wow. We finally threw all the SKUs and it just looks so good. great to be in part of those type of changes you know it's part of you, the history of the brand and um, yeah that, that's that's why I like the job and that's how I do every day what's important to me is that our relationships with our clients are true partnerships uh, one of the things that I value immensely about Kellogg and the long-term partnership that we've had with them is that it is two ways, right? We know that we are there to lift each other up and make, make each other successful. And I think that this project was a great demonstration of that. I have been working with SGK for many years. Uh, I would say nearly almost 10 years I've been working with them. I was from PNG and then moved to Kellogg. So I'm very comfortable with their approach and how they um, come with the final design. Because not only that, uh, you know, food stack is not about just the food, they all always come back with like the culture, colors, patterns, uh, lifestyle, and then they will create the packaging design, combining all the elements so that when I see a few options, I can understand where they come from, what, why do they develop a specific design. And they have always, um, you know, they, of course there is sometimes I have a comment to say, you know, can you do this better or, you know, can you think of other options? But SGK always have this positive um, approach that no matter what is the comment from our side, they'll always come back with a better option. They'll never give up. They will always keep trying. And at the end, we come back with this beautiful design that everybody loves and you know everybody's happy. So I, I sincerely really love the way they work with us and the, the outcome that they deliver to us. So uh, one of the things that uh, I truly value about SGK Creative and what they brought to our design process, what they continue to bring to our design process on Pringles is the fact that they can manage all this great food imagery that you see on the cans and on our packaging for Pringles um, is tightly managed in terms of quality. And it's the, um, the resolution of the chip graphics, the way those illustrations are delivered, uh, but also the flavor cues, uh, the uh, system around how that comes to life is uh, driven by quality. It needs to be driven by quality. So uh, you see these graphics on the can and there's no um, lack of consistency. It's always uh, a very similar impression and that's a high quality impression for taste appeal, appetite appeal, and uh, it drives excitement with consumers. My favorite flavor is probably cheese, actually, ironically. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, you know, Pringles is great. It's got a, it's a huge variety of flavors, some really unusual ones. I think just the other day I was having um, New York hot dog and everyone that you have, you're starting to think, well, you know, 
what is it about this flavor that's making it New York hot dog? So there's that combination of, of, of the, the pork meat and then the mustard and everything. But I'm a, I'm a big fan of the classics. So cheese, they, they just somehow have nailed it. One of the great things when I look back on the project was the excellent teamwork. The teamwork at scale globally across the regions. It hadn't been done before. It was a massive undertaking with a massive brand, an iconic brand that you just couldn't get wrong. I think we are incredibly proud of the way that, that it's turned out. Bringing that global brand governance, uh, that design excellence and that design consistency to a master brand that is surely one of the most iconic brands in the world. We are all about simplifying and amplifying. A project like this is incredibly complex. The number of SKUs, the timelines, the stakeholders, and sometimes that complexity can get really overwhelming for our clients and the teams that are having to implement this because this type of a project only comes up once every decade or so. And so I think the value of what we brought in simplifying was taking that complexity upon our shoulders, using our expertise to help drive process, um, decision rights, uh, ownership, escalation policies, uh, guidelines so that the process of rolling this out was simplified. And what that allowed our clients to do was to really amplify brand impact. They were able to spend their time on kind of how are we gonna communicate the news about this redesign? How are we gonna continue to innovate to make Pringles a global leader in the marketplace? They weren't mired in the details of timelines and requirements because we did that for them. I'd say my only regret from the product is probably I didn't eat enough Pringles. Hi, I'm Francois Estelon, Chief Technology Officer at SGK, and welcome to the technology update segment of our Around the World of SGK virtual event. I am pleased to announce that over the past 18 months, we have completely reinvented our technology platform. Our technology mission is very simple, to enable you to get all forms of content in front of the consumer quickly and cost-effectively. The foundation of our technology tools has been built on three pillars. First, a state-of-the-art client engagement platform, HubX, with a great user experience to make it easier to do business with SGK. Second, a best-of-breed ERP system, providing stability and redundancy to our processes. And third, a native cloud production and automation system to enable scalability and velocity. Working in perfect unison, these three pillars represent a new generation of tools built for a constantly changing market knowing that all tools connected are much more powerful than any one system. I would like to share a couple of highlights. Our HubX platform is releasing version 1.8 this month, adding even more functionality to make our clients more productive when engaging with us. We're also already working on the next-gen HubX, which will elevate the performance of the system with cloud-native scale using Kubernetes and the best UI UX ever. On the backbone of our ERP system, we have added dozens of real-time new reporting capabilities to provide the right information at the right time to our customers. Finally, we keep releasing new development sprints on our production and automation systems, continuously increasing quality, velocity, and accuracy of your marketing assets. Also, we completed the integration of our operations globally, coming together as one high-powered production engine and we created a supply chain center of excellence, applying lean and agile best practices to our operations, ensuring a virtuous cycle of continuous improvement at all times. I am grateful that the financial stability of our parent company, Matthews International, enables us to continue investing in technologies and talent to innovate on your behalf. Our single-minded focus is to design solutions to simplify marketing operation challenges while achieving the highest state of agility possible. We believe 
that technology solutions must enable rapid pivoting and connectivity to deliver sustainable value. Our more than 100 technology experts around the world are hard at work creating new possibilities to simplify your marketing, amplify your brand, and deliver unquestionable value to your business. Thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoyed the session being offered today. Mm-hmm.